G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Ballistic Fist, the top tier power fist that actually is a shotgun on your wrist there. So, basically, when you punch something, we'll go, go ahead and punch the, um, the wall here. And as you can tell, it has a little bit of a, an effect where it's kind of like a muzzle flash and it makes a big bang sound, kind of like a shotgun. doesn't use the shotgun sounds because that would be cheap. But as you can tell, um, when you do punch stuff, it triggers a mechanism that um, makes the, sh the shotguns on your wrists there fire, which is great. Now, for whatever reason, it's game limitations. I think it's time constraints was the general consensus by the community. Um, there was no reload animations or ammo consumption by this, so you're free to punch as many things as you can with this, which is kind of good. So when it comes to unarmed things, obviously you've got the base stat being endurance. So if you want to have good unarmed, then you want your endurance to be higher, which makes sense because obviously you're going to want your hit points to be higher, especially in a situation when you're taking on creatures that are basically melee creatures and you're basically going into harm's way to actually hit these guys. But as you can tell there, we're doing a lot of damage against that deathclaw there. And before that next one can jump and hit us, we'll go ahead and hit him some more in bats. Now the good thing, oh that was a nice crit there, now the good thing about unarmed weapons in bats is that you can actually do different sort of attacks and these are unlocked as you get more unarmed points. So at unarmed I think it's 50 you get the cross which does 2.5 times extra limb damage which is some good stuff there and you can get the uppercut which I believe is at, um, I think it's at unarmed 75 and that actually gives you plus 15 damage increase, a 15% damage increase, sorry. So that's pretty good. So under the safety of VATS we can actually take out these guys quite easily, but even when we're not in VATS we can still do pretty well. And the reason that is, whilst I knocked that death claw down, is that, and also actually before I explain that, what I want to do here is stomp the shit out of this death claw because this is the third and final um, special attack you can do in VATS and that is actually... Um, yes, it's a 100% damage increase, but targets need to be knocked down. So basically, you target them in bats, and then you stomp on them. I'd like to think that I stomped on his balls there, that'd be funny, but okay. So, as you can tell, you can do a whole lot of damage with this thing. And also, um, I like how the um, shotgun blast thing there actually came out of the boot. That's kind of interesting. I think that's just a limitation with how that little perk was implemented there. But as you can tell, there's a lot of things going um, with you when you actually want to use unarmed. Now, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the stomping business. You can attack this thing extremely fast. You'll also alternate between the different attacks um, that you can do in bats just in real time there, which is really good. Makes you look like, more like an unarmed fighter to combine and mix up your attacks, which is good. Um, so we'll go ahead and take out this death claw here. We've almost knackered half his health just by punching him once there, which is really good. And we can probably get that last kill in there. All right. Now, when I was thinking about this weapon in general, um, I was thinking, okay, it doesn't make a lot of sense that you can fire shotgun shells without having to reload it. So I'm thinking, okay, well maybe it'd be more, it make more sense to have one with electrical discharge attached to it. But then I remember the displacer glove exists, and basically that's what it does. So yeah, that's awesome. It's like an energy version of this, but less cool because you're not punching things with shotguns. Okay, so obviously with an unarmed weapon too, you're actually able to do some of the unarmed special attacks that you learn from that ranger dude for one. So we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can activate that. Yes, we can. That immediate knockdown there. And that'll allow us to stomp anyone we actually see, which is great. Now, we actually didn't do too well there, but that's fine. We'll get bats to detect to protect us against that attack. I think we got in just in time. That was funny. It looked like he was going in for a hug. Okay, with a nice punch to the lower guts, we are back in hidden, which is good. Now, this is where it gets a little bit difficult because this next section here is chockers full of death claws, right? And I can't just jump down there because um, obviously what would happen is that I'd just get... Um, jumped on by many death claws and uh yeah abigail here will be mincemeat in three seconds so what we need to do here is play this a little bit more guerrilla warfare like and um what we need to do is just basically use the ai's bad pathing to our advantage here so all we need to do is just find a nice little rock to perk up on and then we'll target one poor soul that gets too close and then we'll go ahead 
and uh, scamper up the rock so nothing can really see us. So this is the part of the promontory where you probably don't want to be if you're an unarmed character. In fact, I want my ballistic fist to be changed into a red glare right now. I mean, look at all this. You could probably get so much damage here, but... Okay, can they attack me? Alright, they're all running around. So we can lead them around Benny Hill style if we want to, but as you can tell, we're going to get absolutely pummeled. Now this one's all alone. This is our chance to strike. Alright, a nice little hit against him. And we go in for uh, that secondary punch there. Oh god, run, 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 run. you got to run your ass off. Now I know I was using mods to have the sprint mod on, but I would have gotten my ass killed very, very easily there. Because that was mummy. She went in for a swipe, but she missed, fortunately for us. But yes, uh, we're in a lot of trouble here. Okay, I saw Chad for a second. He might be alone, and that could be to our advantage. Although, stopping to kill stuff in bats is probably going to be more of a disadvantage. Okay, here comes Chad. Let's uppercut Chad. This is a little something from me to you. Oh my god, we missed. But we teleported behind him, which means we um, completely got rid of his attacks. And we've actually killed an alpha male with a ballistic fist there. Only problem is, now we've got many death claws behind us. If I can just make sure that other death claw... Oh, hang on. Okay, that other death claw inadvertently saved me, but then I got stuck on some rocks. This is going to be very difficult. Okay, so obviously taking out these death claws in real time would be absolutely pointless and madness. So yeah, we're not going to do this in real time. Fortunately, we've got a little thing called Implant GRX 10. I think it's called GRX. No, there's I've just got 10 of them. That's where the 10 came from. And basically, when you take one of those bad boys, is time will slow down. Just a little bit like a jet from Fallout 4, which is great. So that means we can quickly avoid mummy's attacks or at least sidestep them before she comes in and we can go ahead and make her do her dive animation there we've actually knocked her down there knocked down one of the mummies and we've actually knocked down the second one too she so she'll go flying into the air that one looks like he's um, flying too it doesn't last for very long but we've actually got 10 of these bad boys to go through and some jet for good luck and maybe we'll use it in bats a little bit if we feel like it Okay, so I think the heat's a little bit too much for the moment, so we'll try to back off, scamper back up on these rocks before all these guys get to me. So we're doing this a little bit more efficiently. This is sort of how you want to do the guerrilla warfare of this, which is good. Oi, bugger off. <laughs> I taught you a lesson now, didn't I? Okay, so we managed to punch Mummy and a few others, which is good. I can't obviously attack these guys from here, but if I'm if they're sort of close enough for me to actually attack them, um, it'll actually show plus 5% due to concentrated fire. So half of our health is down, and I will bring them back in again. If Chad's up at the front, I need to be worried. I'll be worried about him because he does a mean attack. Okay, we'll pop some implant GRX. And is he going to come in for the whole glory attack? Yes, he is. And through his animation, he is very, very vulnerable to us. And you know what? Let's not push the, our luck anymore. Nope, let's not push our luck anymore. Get up the rocks, Abigail. Don't, don't be, this is bad time for not good pathing. Okay. Good thing we can pause time and give ourselves some more of the good old implant there. So with that, we're able to kill yet another young Deathclaw. We'll lead these guys around here, Benny Hill style. And okay, there's the second mother there. She's on the end. She can't do a jumpy attack if she's not facing us. So that way we can actually come and punch her in the butt before she can attack me. Okay, things are going well. We've only got one of the main um, scary death claws left to kill. And we've got many GRX implants on us to finish the job. So what we'll do here is... Uh, oh, we're well, actually running away. Is that because I killed the Alpha Chad? Do they run away? I thought that was a thing in Quarry Junction. But anyways... Since they're all here with their backs turned to me, I'm just going to go ahead and punch them until there's nothing but little bloody giblets of Deathclaw in my sights, which um, I, I'm proud to say I achieved. Okay, so Mummy comes in for attack. We get to kill her. And um, we'll try to finish off this with a little bit of a stomp. So if you could just knock down. Come on, one of you guys have got to fall down, right? Closer. Come closer. Knock you down. Hang on, we can do, we, we've got a, a guaranteed knockdown. We've just got to do the Ranger takedown. Yes! Okay. Okay, let's just stomp this one. 
Let's stomp him. We'll stomp the young Deathclaw. Hell yeah. Oh, minus 705 health. That absolutely decimated him. Okay. Let's not get killed by the last Deathclaw here. No, that'd be bad. Tell you what, he's, he's trying his best. Alright, let's finish this off with a nice uppercut or seven. Why not? And off he goes into that rock over there. Not quite into space, but you know what? That's fine. So, there you have it. There's a ballistic fist and a little bit of trickery with some implant GRX and some bad AI pathing um, exploitary. If you'd like to see this thing in your game, it's in the vanilla game of Fallout New Vegas, so be sure to grab it if you're interested in this. Not the most conventional build having an unarmed person, but you know what? I had a whole lot of fun with this, and it's, I've never played Fallout New Vegas in an unarmed fashion before, so I do really enjoy this. So, yep, I highly recommend you try this out. Maybe do that unarmed build for, I don't know, some celebrity build that you'll get, you play for 30 minutes then get bored on. Who knows, maybe you'll actually enjoy this. So, I think that's about it. I was about to say links in the description, guys, but no. Um, this thing's in a villa game, as I said. Thank you for watching, guys.